I've been designing clock faces and this is number six. Hey Shubi Doodlers, this is kind of number six in my how to draw numbers on a clock face uh, video kind of thing. So we're, this is six, so we're going to need a six shape and um, we'll bring that around there. So it needs to be kind of double that thickness like that and that's going to need to come around in a circle. Uh, so it's kind of like a coil of rope on the deck of a ship, something like that. Okay, and then this is going to come across there, bring this down a little bit, and like that. And we'll pretend it's got kind of something on the end of it there, kind of lashing it all together. I'm going to make that more straight, I think, there, like that. And then what we're going to need to do is to draw lines diagonally across, actually a bit more of an angle, all the way around. And then as you come around the circle, obviously you're going to have to change the angle of the dangle, as they put it, as they say, is the technical term. Um, and so you're constantly changing the angle as you're going around. And try to keep them similar kind of width apart as you come all oop, a bit more like that I think. Try and keep these angles all pretty much the same and then we'll be coming up to there like that. Good and so uh, start round about here I should and so what you're doing is an S shape that will come in a little bit into that curve and around there and again here and again and again and I'm going to speed this up a bit as I go through the rest now of course these edges must kind of touch so you just want the curves of the edges touching and now here what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of imagine there's this bit it's a bit of leather or something that's on the end there and then that's going to come and so you'll kind of see the the shape underneath like that now when you're sure that it is dry then you can erase the pencil lines so that nobody knows how you did it <laughs> and I'm going to start here and I'm just going to put lines going across that way but not quite touching the edge and that so it gives a sort of a hint of shininess that shiny leather or something like that which gets tied around the end to stop it fraying and then comes just the really boring bit really so and what we need to do is to just draw these lines coming up there like that off close to the edge here and then kind of getting further away because this is where the light is coming so the light is darker here so these lines are longer and now getting them shorter and shorter and then taking them away from the edge as well so darker and lighter but this is not quite so simple because as we're kind of coming around the circle um, then the light is going to be hitting in different places <laughs> so you have to be thinking about that the whole time where is the light shining? And I think we're starting to see round right about here, then it'll be darkest on this side. So I think we're still okay here. And we're going to get a kind of a crossover point now where this side is going to start being the darkest. But then no one ever said it wouldn't be. 
And I kind of feel like it's kind of changing over again around about this point. I'm just shading in these bits in between because they will be very dark in those little kind of gaps. And here I kind of feel like it's changing again. Yeah, definitely there. Like that. So I think there's some extra bits to kind of fill in for like from here. And these are these kind of changeover areas, aren't they? And it's just a question of kind of going around it and doing what, what kind of feels right, I think, really. <laughs> thinking about where there's where's the light shining and so I think that what I'm going to do now is a little bit of extra cross hatching and I'm just kind of doing each individual um, kind of little ropey bit here with an extra bit of cross hatching and I wanted to go in that direction and this is the direction where it's dark on this side if you remember so this will be getting lighter it will be on that side of the and now we reach the same angle if that if you follow up with that. and here so now it's cross hatching all the way up there like that and this is really just to give it some extra definition and make it stand out a bit more and now we've reached that same angle again so here we are going a bit more like that and again we've reached that similar angle so I'm going to put a little bit on that side now a little bit there maybe a bit more there and I think we're going to need some on this side now take your time when you're cross hatching because the more you uh, the more you do it the more practiced you become and the faster you will get but it's best to get nice accurate cross hatching rather than scribbling there you go how to draw a curl of rope in the shape of a six well i hope you enjoyed that and if you did uh, why not go and learn how to draw cartoon people or have a go at the mystery drawing <laughs> either way make sure you click that logo and subscribe on youtube for lots more drawing videos and why not go and join my art school on patreon all my courses they start from only three dollars a month and there's assignments and all sorts of stuff like that uh, check it out and in the meantime keep drawing 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 practice 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 and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.